What's up, YouTube? Today we're going to do something very exciting. We're going to use Lua. We're going to use Tree Sitter. We're going to use Queries. We're going to use Python. We're going to use shell commands. We're going to use all of those things to do something quite exciting. That quite exciting thing looks like taking these embedded SQL queries. We're going to learn how to write tree sitter queries to find these. We're going to learn how to format them automatically. And then lastly, we're going to learn how to inject SQL highlighting into those things. We'll eventually be able to do something very exciting, like call a command like SQL magic and automatically format these embedded SQL strings within our code, all using just a few scripts that we're going to write in this video. So stick around, you know, you could just smash the like button ahead of time and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks everybody. Let's get to it. So the first thing that we need to do is figure out how can we actually reliably find the text ranges, right? The parts of this buffer that are actually this embedded SQL, right? We don't actually want to run whatever we're going to do just over any string inside of a Rust file. What we actually want to do is find the first string in any place that we call SQL X query. You don't have to worry really about what the implementation or any of this means. All you have to know is that when we write these characters in a row, the next thing is going to be a SQL query embedded inside of Rust. Rust, by the way, Rust code. And so we want to find some way to do that. So the first thing, and this is available via a plugin that I'll link below, but inside of NeoVim, is a wonderful, wonderful tool called TS Playground Toggle. And what this does when you open it up is it opens up and it actually shows you the different nodes, locations, ranges, and everything that's inside of here that NeoVim knows about your code, which is already mind boggling. It's very exciting. But if you press O inside of this buffer, you open up this little new window. This little window here allows you to write queries and see the results of those queries live. So this is actually written in scheme, which is a Lisp like language. You can read more about this on tree sitters website, or even in some helpful documentation in Endem tree sitter. I will try and link those in the description as well. So I will walk us through how to do the basics of this effectively. Whenever you type a parenthesis and then a name of something, this is going to look for nodes with this type. So you'll notice we have some identifiers in here. You can capture a query, which is basically something inside of a node by doing something like this and just writing ID. And so now you'll notice anything that's an identifier is now highlighted on the left side of our screen. This is great. What we're going to do now is try and basically whittle down this situation until we are only matching this exact range. So instead of looking for identifiers, we're actually going to be looking for raw string literals. So if we put inside of here, raw string literal, and we just put something like SQL string, then we're going to see now that these all get matched. However, we have a problem. If we had something like let X um, is R like this, hello world. And then we had this as well. We're going to have a problem here because this will also get highlighted by this query. That's not good. So we need to define a more specific query to make sure that we're only matching the region that we care about. Okay. So I've gone ahead and done the classic cooking show thing where I take the code and I put it in a box and we do a transition and out comes the cooked code. But the reason for that is I just want to walk you through the final explanation, not watch each of the things happening. Basically what's going to happen here is we define a larger query. Notice how we can continue nesting different names of items within this query, which you'll get the hang of, especially if you've already done some Lisp. Uh, and we can sort of continuously iterate on getting a more specific and more specific query as we go. So when we look at this raw string literal here, if we sort of scroll up the tree, what you'll see is that we have a macro invocation. And we say that, hey, what we want is to make sure that the path, so that's the path right here, identifier, this needs to equal SQL X. So basically what we say is capture this identifier, put that into path. Then what we can do is we can ask tree sitter to say, hey, are these two things equal path and SQL X? 
And in this case, yes, they are. So when we click on SQL string here, we notice that this whole area is highlighted. However, if we change this to something like SQL Y, and we looked to highlight this, this one no longer matches, right? So this is so that I can feel confident that I'm always matching exactly the amount of text that I need. We do the same thing with name. And then we just say that inside of this token tree, we have a raw string literal, which we find out just by looking at the tree generated by TS Playground Toggle. You might want to basically just pause here for like 10 seconds and read through this tree above and then read through these queries below and match up the names so that you can see how each of them line up. Once you do, it becomes a lot more straightforward. And the other tip that I have as well for learning this is you need to go practice some queries for yourself. After you do that, you can start writing queries like this very easily and quickly and effectively. So now we have a query. We can expand on this in a different video. If people want, let me know in the comments, but we're going to move on assuming that now we have a query that can always match us this region of code. That is exactly the string in a SQL query string. So the next thing that I need to be able to do now that I can basically get this text from a region is I would like to format it, right? That was kind of the point. And so I found a cool little Python library called SQL parse. I can just go ahead and I can just do something like equal import SQL parse. And then if I want to format something, I could say print SQL parse dot format. And if we said like select star from my table, and we said keyword case is upper like this, it will run this and it will format it and give me exactly the formatting that I'm looking for as some additional options. So I just took this library and then I wrote a small little Python script. It does a few goofy things that just make sure that the formatting stays consistent, but ultimately they don't matter. And uh, shout out to comma first lines. <laughs> I just did it to honor SQL, right? Because uh, we're going to probably do a bunch of that inside of SQL. But this part doesn't really matter, right? The reason that I'm showing you in this video is I want to show you the tools that you could do to do something crazy just like this in your NeoVim. Find some random stuff, run a command over it, ship the results back in, right? So all I do is I read stuff from sys, uh, standard in, I manipulate it, and then I print it back out. This is awesome. We can compose tools together. Maybe you have a... JQ thing that you want to use to do formatting of different JSON, or you have whatever tool it is, just compose whatever tool you need by writing yourself a teeny little script that takes something in from standard in and then print something back to standard out. This is the tool that we're going to be used to generating our formatted SQL, but all you really need to know is that it takes in standard in, ships to standard out, and we're going to put that standard out back in our original buffer. All right, so here we are. We're gonna write the function that takes that output and puts it back in the buffer in the correct places. So there's a few key pieces that we need to be able to do as we work through this. All of these effectively have longer information inside of NeoVim's help, which I really recommend you read and take time for yourself. Otherwise, there's no amount of talking that I can do to make it make sense. So let's keep moving with this. And if you have to pause and look anything up, I super recommend doing that. So. What do we do? The first thing is we create a new query. This is using parse query built into NeoVim. And we create this query object that we're going to use later to look for matches in a buffer. We tell it what language we want, and then we tell it the query that we want. You'll notice this is basically the query that we had before with some slight modifications for my special use cases. You wouldn't have to necessarily do any modifications. It would just be up to you to test it out for yourself and find out what you need to do. So this is how we get that query object. I wrote a little helper function for us to understand how to get the root node of a tree. Remember, we saw that tree on the right hand side of the screen. We want to get that very base one so we can iterate over all of its children. If you don't understand what's going on there. You guessed it. Read the help. So we get the root. This is our format dat SQL function because this is where we're going to format that SQL. As we work through here, I just basically do something to make sure I only run this in Rust files. Rust, by the way, because uh, this query isn't set up to run outside of that. So we get the root of this. And then now what we're going to do is through this function, we're going to add several changes. Changes are just going to be some local tables that I make 
that I can use to update the contents of the buffer. And we'll talk about why we store these in a table in one moment. But here's where the meat of the implementation really happens. What we're going to do is we're going to take that query object that we had. In Lua, a colon is used to access class type functions. And so effectively what this does is it says, call iter captures on this embedded SQL. If you need more info about that, let me know in the comments. I can make a separate video about it, but we don't have time to cover it today. But basically this iter captures, you can read about it in the help, takes a root node, it takes the buff number that you wanna run over and then the range. So we wanna run it over the whole file. And what we're going to do is for each of these captures, we're going to do a little bit of text manipulation. First thing we do is we figure out what is the name of the kind of capture that we have. And this name is comes from this query here. And so we have path, name, and SQL. Well, of course, we want this one that SQL because this contains the SQL contents. And so we're only going to do stuff if we're on that node. It's also going to return us the captures for path and name because whenever you have an at sign in your query, that's a capture and you're telling tree sitter, please give me information about that. So we're only going to do this for here. And so what we can do is we can get the range of the node, which is the start row, start call, end row and end column in that order. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run our formatter. This formatter is just an implementation detail of what we want. Ultimately, it's going to return a list of strings that we want to put each on their own individual line in the buffer. This is super similar to what we've been talking about in our execute anything in NeoVim series. So I'm not going to go over that. Refer to those videos if you want to learn more info. And then I just added some indentation. If you'll remember when we run SQL magic here, it actually puts this at this level. We could change this to not do indentation. So it'd be all the way to the left or further indented than where the range started. But this is just a nice thing to align it vertically so that it always aligns in the same place. And then lastly, we need to put the changes that we make inside of a list the reason that we do this is because we're going to iterate through the table the ca of captures from the top of the file to the bottom. But if we change any lines at the top of the file, that means the lines at the bottom of the file will no longer be correct. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to insert at the first position in our table and Lua's one based, remember? So this means basically at the beginning of our list. And so we continue to insert inside at the beginning of list so that basically we're making a reversed list of items. So now we've collected all the start, final, and formatted text that we want. And so we can iterate over the changes and we can set the start, final, false, change of format, just like how we were updating the content in our execute anywhere, which as a quick aside, I hope this is sort of showing you that once you start building some of these tools for yourself, you're able to really understand and iterate quickly towards doing pretty impressive stuff. We're just going to set those lines with our updated text. And then now we create a user command that says, Hey, I, uh, whenever you type SQL magic format, that SQL in this buffer. So after creating that auto command, I can actually just save the file and it will automatically format it for me every single time. If I'm in a rust file, what's nice is it's not going to run any commands externally. If we don't have any SQL inside of this buffer. So it's really fast, really quick and runs before we save the file. You can tell that this is really fast. You know, I just save it and it goes almost immediately here to be updated. Super exciting, really quick, really great, and a really nice and tight workflow that I'm enjoying a lot. I hated the fact that I had to line stuff up or move things around or think about formatting just because I'm writing SQL in the middle of another file, but never again for this project will I have to do that. I can always just let my auto formatter take care of that for me. And now to wrap things up, as promised, I'm going to show how we make this text here look and act like SQL in terms of its highlighting. And this is actually super easy because in part one, we figured out how can we find this range with tree sitter. And we're going to just basically reuse that exact query to tell tree sitter, Hey, I would like you to highlight this like a particular language. This is called injections. And so what you need to do is somewhere in your config, you need to go to queries slash rust slash injections or change whatever language rust for whatever other thing it is. And you just take the query that we had, right? Which is just this code right here. We uncomment this 
And then the important thing here is that the language that you would like it highlighted as is the name of that capture. So I would like it to be highlighted like SQL. So you need to make sure you have TS install SQL like this. And it says, hey, I've already had installed for you might ask you to do it. So you could reinstall that. And then when you do that and you save this file, and you go back and edit this file again. So you just open the file. You can check this live, edit, boom. Notice how this now has changed to being highlighted like SQL. You thought probably, oh, this part's gonna be so hard. There's gonna be so much more. No. No, it's super easy. You just inject the language inside of another language by using the same tree sitter queries that we did before. And that's it. We've got auto formatting of SQL inside of random strings inside of a Rust project. I could super easily extend this to basically do any other kind of matching that I wanted if I had other types of SQL hidden throughout my Rust projects. And yes, I'm saying Rust as many times as possible just so that I can really get my Rust count up and the YouTube algorithm can just shower me with love and happiness, right? But anyways, we have that for the auto formatting and we have the highlighting we did it all live today on twitch so if you're not watching my twitch we stream every friday and a few times during the week doing lots of random different stuff go ahead and give that a follow and then come hang out there ultimately uh, we've been having a lot of fun and i want to thank all of you for watching the videos i hope you're enjoying this one if you like this video say that neovim is cool in whatever language you consider your favorite language, programming or human. Just let me know in the comments. It's always fun to see people from around the world watching the videos. That really blows my mind because I'm just a dude in my basement talking to a camera and writing in my favorite editor. Anyways, with that, let me know what else you'd like to see. And I hope you all have a great day. Keep on NeoVimming. I'll see you later, everybody.